Hey guys, have you ever been on a scene and everything your patient is exhibiting scream stroke? You ask all the right questions, you do an amazing neuro exam, and you are convinced enough to call it in as a stroke alert and start to transport. Then, just as you arrive at the ER, your patient's symptoms suddenly disappear. Their mentation returns, and you walk into the ER going, I swear, I swear they are having a stroke. Well, they were, and they might again. Today, we're talking about the TIA, aka the mini stroke, so let's get started. When someone has a stroke, it can be caused by either a blockage of a blood vessel inside the brain, these are called ischemic strokes, or a blood vessel inside the brain has ruptured and causes what is called a hemorrhagic stroke. A TIA, or more properly named a transient ischemic attack, is a form of ischemic stroke, meaning that something blocks a blood vessel inside the brain, decreasing or eliminating blood flow to the portions of the brain. When the brain is deprived of blood flow, it is ultimately deprived of adequate tissue perfusion. A brain that is depleted of oxygen, glucose, and the other nutrients it requires will certainly begin to cause harm. The biggest thing that could cause harm for me is you guys not hitting that like button. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I had to walk you into that one. But really, do me a favor and go hit it. The main difference between a TIA and a CVA, or cerebrovascular accident, is the length and severity of the blockage. When a piece of loose plaque finds its way into the brain and lodges itself, the signs and symptoms of a stroke begin. In a TIA, this blockage typically lasts only a short time. Seconds, minutes, maybe only a few hours but never more than 24 hours. However, in a full ischemic CVA, the clot does not unblock itself. It must be removed by either drugs or surgery. The longer the brain is without perfusion, the more brain tissue infarcts or dies, thus causing debilitating residual effects of the stroke. In a TIA, the blockage is not long enough to cause any permanent neurological deficits. The nice thing about a TIA is they will present like any other ischemic stroke. So be on point and thorough in your neuro exam. See about facial asymmetry and or drooping, speech difficulty, confusion, pupillary changes, weakness to one side of the body, inability to perform commands, pronator drift and other movement deficits, and lastly, sensory changes to the skin. The more thorough your neuro exam, the better. Also be sure to gather a full set of baseline vital signs, including blood glucose. Blood glucose is highly important because the symptoms of hypoglycemia can mimic stroke-like symptoms, and we want to rule out all possibilities other than stroke. On a side note, there is a condition called TIA clusters. This is when multiple TIAs happen right after another. Many of these clusters are small clots that get stuck, cause symptoms, and then free themselves in rapid succession. I can say personally, I've never seen this type of TIA, but in theory, it's possible that you could see your patient in and out of their stroke-like symptoms multiple times while within your care. If you guys have witnessed these, please let me know in the comments and just describe how it was. I'd really like to hear about it. EMS won't know it's a TIA unless symptoms resolve in front of the provider. But keep in mind that one in three patients that have a TIA will eventually have a full CVA. The risk of a CVA after a TIA is between 2 and 17% for the first 90 days after the first TIA. This is when history taking as well as a reevaluation of your patient is most important. Don't get lost in doing paperwork, but instead take the opportunity to track the timeline of when symptoms start and when some or all of the symptoms resolve. Speaking about assessments, check out this really cool stroke exam called Be Fast by clicking right here. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys in the next video.